Howdy doody everybody, happy Saturday, um, welcome to the workshop for the guitar making channel, my name is Mark Bailey and today I'm going to be showing you what I think is the best wood to make your first guitar, but I'm also going to show you some fancy bits as well, <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to show off, but I can't help it today, I've got some nice bits of wood to show you. So um, I'm going to start off by telling you what I think is the best wood to make your first guitar and why. So um, as it's coming up to Christmas, I thought this might be a good time just to um, tell you guys about, about our kit. So we have a um, build your own guitar kit available on the site, which you'll see. And it's basically, oh, it's all built around our course. So um on the on the um the website guitarmaking.co.uk you'll find there's a whole section on courses to get on the full premium courses you'll need to be a premium member but then you'll be able to get access to the full on courses which is a step by step guide to designing and building your own electric guitar so what i do is we start with a blank piece of paper and we draw a center line and then we go through the process of designing a guitar and I'm making a fairly basic guitar like this but you can change the um, drawing you can change the shape you can change um, all the parts you can even change the wood as we're going to talk about in a minute um, but I do recommend that you start with something fairly basic like this um, the, the one on the course has actually got two pickups um, but it could have one or two pickups 
Um, but you can customise it to your heart's content. But where I'm coming from is I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for you to get into the art of guitar making. So um, a very wise person once said to me to start with the basics and then once you've got the basics down, well then the world's your oyster. And so that's, that's what, what we're all talking about today. And um, if you've got any questions or anything, then make sure to um, leave them in the comments. And our beautiful assistant, Carol, is over there. And she'll be shouting out your questions and uh, comments and anything that might be interesting. Um, so Carol will be heckling me from the corner. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, just leave, write tippy-tappy at them in. And Carol will um, shout them out for us. And um, we'll pause for questions at certain moments and Carol will shout them out if she thinks they're appropriate. So she's got her hand up now, surprisingly enough. Well, um, something interesting has just occurred. Stephen Adams says that um, he's noticed... That he, he Hi, might, Stephen. He would like to order a kit, but they're on back order in the shop. Oh, OK. And I said that explains why no-one's ordered one for a while. Right, so we'll check that. <laughs> that explains, doesn't it? As you can see, we're not really... Um, we're not merchants. We're not, we're not the best business people you'll ever meet. Right. But, um, um, so what you're saying but is... But what so we're really into is building guitars and uh, yeah if you order one we'll get it to you ASAP. You can't order one because it's on back order. So oh okay says, well we'll fix that. So he says does that mean they're in stock and they're always in stock. So yes we one. always have kits in stock so if it says it's on back order that's just a glitch in the shop. Um, I'll fix that straight after I get off <laughs> um, this yeah. live stream. So what a great start. So I'm already selling something that's not available. Brilliant. But yeah, we thought with the run-up to Christmas, you guys might be looking for ideas what to get. And um, uh, keep an eye out on us because we've got some other stuff coming as well. But the ultimate gift for Christmas is not, has got to be the kit, hasn't it? The full-on kit. So our kit is not a pre-made body and a pre-made neck that you just screw together and bolt the parts on. Our kit is start with wooden blanks. And on, on our course, we literally start with wooden blanks. Um, so I'm going to tell you about wooden blanks first, because it's not as simple as you might think. Um, I meet a lot of guys who've got bits of wood in their shed, bits of wood in their garage that they want to use for guitar making. And they ask me, can I use that? Um, well, the simple answer is yes. You can use pretty much anything to make um, a guitar, especially an electric guitar. Um, We'll talk about the neck and the fretboard in a minute. Th those bits are a bit more important. And I would recommend that you use particular guitar making wood for those bits. But for the body, you can use pretty much anything. Um, dimensions wise, well, the idea of doing the drawing is so that you can then make sure you get a piece of wood big enough. Um, so it's, it's important to do a drawing first. But uh, the other thing we're interested in is the thickness of the body. So um, a body blank is normally about 46 mil thick. It could be a little bit thinner or a little bit fatter. So if you've got a piece of wood that's about two inches or a little bit thinner, um, if you've got a piece of wood like that, then by all means you can use it to make a guitar. Um, but it really needs to be flat on both sides. And that is the tricky bit. So I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. Carol's got a hand up again already. Well, just because there's a relevant question now. Eddie Cameron says, um, what is your view of two and three piece bodies? What do you, how do you feel about those? So let's talk about body blanks then. Um, it's quite rare to find a one piece body nowadays. Let me see if I've got one. I did have one to lay my hands on. I've lost it. Here it is. Sorry, I'm actually surrounded by wood again. <laughs> As I like to be. So here's a one piece body blank. Um, no join. That's weird. It looks like there's a join on it. But it's not. That's just in the wood, that line. <laughs> I tell you what that is. It's probably been resting in the, in the wood room with another piece against it. Look at the other side. You can see it's a one piece of wood. What am I talking about? Look, it is two pieces. <laughs> hey. Look, there's a join. 
Is that, is is that a joint? joint? No, it's not a joint. It's a saw cut. It is a joint. No, it's is not. It not. When is the when is it? No, that's just a saw cut where the where the saw cut in and then stopped. So it's not actually a joint. It is a one piece blank. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The the point is that one piece blanks. By definition, you need a bigger piece of wood. So they're going to be more expensive and actually they're a lot rarer because um, wood tends to be cut down, well, they, they cut the trees down younger so the, the, uh, there aren't so many big trees left. Yeah, look, there's the end of the plank just to prove that it is actually a one piece. There's no join that. This is the other side. No join. But it is quite rare. Um, now, if you can get a piece of wood that's one piece, then by all means use it. But there is a disadvantage. The main disadvantage is because it is such a big piece of wood, um, if it has any tendency to warp at all, then it'll warp twice as much as a two piece blank would. And with a two piece blank, what we would do is turn one over. So if, um, if it does warp, then it will, it will stay a lot flatter. So one will warp one way, one will warp the other. Um, so two piece, because it's narrower, doesn't have much space to move, so it will move less. And a three piece again, um, Here's a three piece. It's actually two joins on this one. So uh, to, for me, a one piece is a lot easier because there's no joining. Um, normally most pieces are two pieces and then they need to be joined. So that's what we do here. Here's a three piece. So for me, this is a bit of a pain because we've got to join it twice. But it means that you can use narrower pieces um, to make your guitar out of. So if all you have is a very long narrow piece then you can still use it. And a guitar body, electric guitar body especially, can be as many pieces as you like. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you look at an old Strat uh, and you'll probably find that there's, it's made of more pieces than you imagine. So one piece is beautiful if you can get it but bear in mind it's more prone to warpage and also the more highly figured your piece of wood is the more prone it is to warpage. Uh, if you're not sure what figure is then we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So um, wood can be either plain like this or it can be figured with lots of different types of figure. So if you buy the kit from us you will be supplied with a two-piece mahogany body blank, just like this, and it's it's thickness and ready to work. That means it's been through my sander. Both sides of the wood is sanded. So um, most places, when you buy wood for making well for making anything, when you buy wood, it usually comes rough sawn. So here's a piece of maple just to show you um, what rough sawn looks like. Yeah, it looks like it sounds. Rough saw marks all over it. So the, the first job with this is to get it flat and level. And for a beginner, that's, that's like page one of your build your own guitar book, is get your piece of wood flat and level. Well, most people are gonna fall at the first hurdle because it's not easy. In fact, I always say making your piece of wood flat and level is half the battle. Making guitars is easy really if you've got a flat and level piece of wood to start with. So that is what we do here. If you look around the internet or around you'll probably find, um, you will find pieces of wood cheaper than what we sell them. Um, but the thing is all of our wood is, is worked on before I sell it to you. So we work on every piece. Um, we basically thickness every piece, which means it goes through my thickness sander and you get a body blank that's ready to work on like this. And trust me, that is that does make your life a lot easier. 
And as anybody who's out there will tell you, if they've started with rough sawn timber, your first major task is getting it flat and level. So that, that is what I recommend as your um, body blank. It's mahogany. The reason I've chosen mahogany is because it's the easiest to work. It's nice and easy to work with. And also it's the best sound um, combination. So a combination of fantastic sound and easy to work makes mahogany the number one choice for me to recommend to you for your first build. Having said that, you can use whatever you want, but I suggest that if you, if you use anything other than mahogany, you're probably making your life a bit harder. Um, there are the odd exception, like Maranti is a mahogany substitute that we've tried. It looks a bit like mahogany, occasionally mistaken for it. Um, Maranti is a bit lighter and, and also easy to work. Um, and older is another one which is also easy to work. So they are out there and there are, there's more wood out there than I could possibly get through in one session. There, there are thousands of varieties of wood, hundreds of varieties. Try them all, what can I say? If in doubt, try it. Um, but just bear in mind, like I say, the more highly figured it is, probably the harder it is going to be to work. Um, I'll show you what I mean by highly figured in a minute. So in the kit we supply a mahogany neck blank as well. So this is our uh, standard neck blank. Again from mahogany it matches and for exactly the same reasons. Wonderful tone and easy to work with. Check it out. If it sounds good as a piece of wood, it's going to sound good as a guitar, isn't it? So what we're looking for really with a with a neck, if possible, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it again on this, but what we're looking for is vertical grain. I'll draw it on. So we're looking for grain, which is going this way. If you look on the end of your piece of wood. So all our mahogany is quarter sawn. Maple tends to be not quarter sawn. Um, so the other main popular choice for necks, necks are usually mahogany or maple, um, but maple's a lot harder. It's a lot, lot harder uh, for carving and routing and everything really. So it's gonna take you a bit longer and be a bit tougher, but it is also stiffer and stronger than mahogany. And so, it's slab cut, which means the grain usually goes across that way. Um, with maple, it's not really so important, but with mahogany, um, you really want to try and get a vertical grain piece. So all, all of our um, neck blanks that go out from here are all quarter sawn, if it's mahogany. Um, maple, sometimes if we're lucky, it's quarter sawn, but it's usually slab cut. It's less important um, with a maple neck, as I say. Um, one option you can do is you can cut it down the middle and then you can fold the two bits up to join it and you can actually make a quarter sawn blank and you can even glue some fancy bits of wood in between. To make a laminated neck blank, here's an offcut from the, the offcuts from the neck that we're making. There's the neck. So there's options. By the way, that was an acoustic guitar. Um, if you're more interested in acoustic guitars, then I'm gonna be talking about um, the wood for acoustic guitars next week. And um, also care and storage of wood, which is a question that we get a lot. Um, I will just give you a quick tip on care and storage of wood though. Um, let's do that right now. And then I'm going to talk about fretboards. So next, usually mahogany or maple, um, but I recommend mahogany again. Um, so if you just check this out here over here, here's some bits of wood that I've got. 
um, a little piece of veneer on the top actually. Zoom in. So, uh, some bits of wood that have come in and I've just stacked them. So um, with the thicker pieces like your body blanks and that, it's less important, but you really want air to be able to get all the way around your, your pieces of wood. So, um, so here you can see I've got a, actually a veneer at the top there, a piece of veneer, and I've stacked it on top of two slats so air can get all the way around. So if, if we, we made this yesterday, this piece of veneer, and if I'd left it just flat on the bench, air can only get to one side of it. So this side dries out more than this side, which causes it to warp. So that is the most common cause of warpage in the workshop, is leaving pieces of wood where the air can't get all the way around. Sometimes a piece of wood will warp and there's just nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can to do is just to let it do its thing and then get it straight afterwards. So some pieces of wood are just not destined to be a guitar. Um, so stack them so wood can get all the way around. I'll just show you these. Here's a piece of um, a coca bola. So what you can do with your piece of wood, your body blank, is instead of just leaving it plain like this, you can put a piece of wood on the front that is the, probably the cheapest way to upgrade it rather than buy a whole big fat piece of wood that's really um, highly figured. You can buy a thin piece and glue it on the top and that's a lot cheaper and it still just looks as nice. Like this, for instance. Here is a, here's a piece of wood with mahogany back and a maple cap. So these are what we call caps. Um, and as I'm here, I'm just going to show you uh, the ones that are stacked here. So again, these come as two pieces and um, this one's going to end up as a base, I believe. Is this John Ben's base, Carol? Uh, Look at that. No, uh, well, I don't know. Is that where you put it? Is that the... Yeah, I believe this is going to be a through neck base at some point. Um, so yeah, subscribe for that, folks. Look at that. Uh, Beautiful, isn't it? Is it? Have you got two bits of Coca Cola? No, I've got one bit of Coca Cola. Now, if you if you want anything from us that's not on the website, by the way, I've got a whole room full of wood out there, um, and we just haven't got the time to put everything on. So if there's something that you particularly want, just email us. Get in touch with Carol, and. Um, we just love digging through our wood room, <laughs> looking for bits of wood for you. So uh, yeah, if there's anything in particular you want that's not in the shop, just ask, because we've probably got it. We just haven't got around to putting it in the shop yet. And, and does that apply to kits as well? Can, can we alter? Yeah, that applies to the kits as well. If you want to change anything in the kit, just ask. You can always say no, can't we? And actually, Mark, I'm not sure if that's the bit of wood, but somebody, I, I can't tell them here, somebody has Ask us to, to, to thickness and join the cat. That's the one I'm going to show you next. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, Carol was saying, um, we also don't mind joining bits up for you. So, like I say, getting your piece of wood flat and straight is half the battle. Um, what we want to end up with is a, is a cap that's, that's joined like this. So there's, a, there's our two-piece cap that's joined and it's nice and flat and ready to glue on, you see, much easier than starting with this. Um, most people haven't got the tools to deal with this, um, but, but we can do it here. So if you've got a piece of wood you'd like us to join, by all means, um, that's what, uh, that's what uh, is the case with this piece of zero coating. Another fantastic piece of wood. Look at this. Zero coaty. Sweet swoo. So um, somebody's actually sent me this to join. 
and then we're going to um, thickness it and send it out to them ready to glue on to their um, neck, uh, body blank. So yes, you can buy a fancy piece of wood to put on top of your body blank, make it look nice. And there's a whole world of those out there. I'll show you a few now. Just restack this. Like I say, it's really important with thin pieces of wood that you stack them so air can get all the way around. Another thing on top and then some weight on the top just helps hold it all flat. But if it's going to move, it moves. There's nothing you can do about it. You just have to let it do its thing and then um, straighten it up afterwards. So I'm going to show you some caps that you can use to glue on. Um, if you remember, I mentioned that uh, wood can be plain or it can be figured. So here is a, piece of flamed maple, piece of plain maple, to show you the difference. I've got to move this camera back. Okay, so this is plain maple. There's no figure on it. It's quite boring, um, but actually for a neck, that's a good thing. Um, ironically, the more highly figured your um, piece of wood is, the more likely it is to twist and warp and bend and that kind of thing. So that might be one thing you want to take into account. Actually, the best piece of wood for a neck is really boring to look at, ironically. So there's a piece of plain wood what we would call plain maple. And then there's all kinds of different kinds of figure. So here's a bit of flame. Do you can see, maybe I'll show you a better piece. This first one I showed you was flamed with the straight lines. So you can see those straight lines going across. Some people call them fiddleback maple. Um, violin makers obviously call it that. Um, curly maple is another name. Because if you catch it in the light, the dark bits go light and the light bits go dark. It curls in the light. It looks three dimensional like it's curling. There, you can see it there, look. So some people call it curly maple. Because it curls in the light. So flamed maple. Here's another piece of flamed. Um, quilted maple. So this kind of looks like um, kind of looks like you've dropped a silk sheet. And what I didn't mention was these are all book matched. So this this piece of wood started life um, like this. Started life like this. Somebody cut it down the middle. I think it was me and then we open it like a book and then it matches you see on each side so that's called book matching and all maple caps well most of them are book matched I'll show you some more different types of figure and sometimes you get um you get a mixture as well so you might get some quilt and some flamed and you might get some um Here's bird's eye maple. So bird's eye is another different one. It's got these look kind of like little knots. I don't know if that might show up better on this camera. So that's bird's eye, it looks like little knots. I guess they thought they looked like bird's eyes. But these are all maple. It's all the same species of wood. Uh, Quilted, another piece of quilted, look at that. Spectacular. Really gorgeous that. It might be difficult to see, but can you see these like veins? When it's polished, they'll look amazing. Um, 
one thing you can do, I don't recommend this too much, but um, you can um, just dampen your wood with water uh, just to see what it's going to look like with the finish on. I don't recommend you do this too often or too much, but if you just want to see what it looks like, as a special treat to you guys, let's do it. So, oh, this is just white spirit. I'm happy to do this now because I know I'm going to do quite a lot of sanding on this. Um, white spirit can leave a little, uh, like a residue behind, so we don't like to use it too much. Um, but there you go. Actually, it smells more like water, that. Look at that. Um, I should mention as well, I meant to say that um, Carol actually has a folder. These, these caps are not all on the website, but they're all for sale if somebody wants to buy them. Um, we have a folder full of pictures of all our caps. So if you are interested in any of these caps, then um, get in touch and Carol will send you the, the link to the folder. And then you, they're all numbered and you can tell us which one it was you wanted. And then we'll send you the, we'll send it out to you. Okay, so all these bits of wood I'm showing you are actually available um, if you should require them. Um, if, you've got, some questions? if you've got a particular thickness you need or anything, just let us know. Um, so we've got a few of those spalted ones. Let me just get to the end of caps, Carol, and then I've got to do fretboards. I didn't do fretboards yet. You're going to say the questions all at the end then? There we go, look at that. Um, Spalted maple is quite trendy at the moment, it's quite popular. So we have a few bits of that in. I already showed you that. The coca bola. Here's another one. This is Wenge or Venge, depending on where you're from. Um, and then the ones I've shown you so far have been all thin ones that we would use for for our bandsman guitar or any flat top guitar. If you wanted to do any kind of carving, then you need a thicker piece. So here's a piece. I like it to be 18 mil thick if I'm doing a carved top. Um, I'll show you some pictures of carved tops in a minute if you're not sure what I mean. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So um, a thicker piece of wood required if you're carving. Obviously you don't want to carve through your thin piece, do you? If you're putting some shape into it. Um, and there's another piece quilted. Uh, that's actually a one piece. One, no, it's not. <laughs> the trouble is, if you do a really good join, and we're quite proud of our joins here, if you do a really good join, it can be hard to see. That is actually one piece, uh, it's a one piece um, quilted maple. So quite rare to find. Usually two pieces because it makes it uh, easier and cheaper to make. And also, Actually, book matching it has the advantage again of making the piece more stable because a great big wide piece is more prone to warping, like I said earlier. So your two narrow pieces will be less prone to warping. Um, and also, it's kind of nice having that match, you know, when you book match it. One piece of wood, um, you know, it's not going to have that kind of like mirror image effect. So sometimes it's actually nice to book match. See what I mean about the you get this mirror image effect on both sides. If you just used one great big piece of wood, you wouldn't get that. So, um, so we've done bodies and necks. Now I'm just going to quickly talk about fretboards. Unless we've got any questions, do you want to get in there, Carl? Well, before, I think before you get onto fretboards, why don't you deal with the questions that relate to? Yeah, let's do questions then. Okay, so. Um, 
it's worth saying. So Simon's channel was asking, he, he's got um, some wood that he's not sure what it is. So I just wanted to say that uh, somebody, TV101, suggested that he puts pictures on the forum. Brilliant, brilliant idea. Which I think is a good way of, if you've got wood that is unidentified. What a great um, idea. That's what then, we're for. That's what the forum's all about. It's about sharing information and knowledge um, and helping people get unstuck. He also asked a question about it, would you make a, a neck with plywood? Would you, you try and would you sort of make a, a cheap neck with plywood? Um, no, I would make a test piece maybe from plywood and I would make patterns from plywood. Um, but I wouldn't actually make a neck from plywood. Um, having said that, you could make your own laminated neck plywood. <laughs> well, they're actually, they're, they're Call it posh plywood. But most plywood isn't good quality. Um, if you cut through it, you, you might have noticed this. If you cut through most plywood, you'll see it's actually full of gaps and holes. It's only got a good veneer on each side and the rest of it is really cheap, nasty stuff. It's full of uh, holes um, and gaps. It, if you used marine ply, then um, marine ply doesn't have any of those gaps. It's much higher quality plywood. And so you probably could make a neck from marine ply. Um, but it would be a hard sell. <laughs> It'd be hard to sell a neck and say this, this is made from best marine ply. Most people want to hear that it's made from um, high quality Honduran mahogany or something like that. So there is a snob factor to plywood. So, but also in the comments, obviously the expert on, on ply and laminates is yes, Agpro. Yes, so of course, yes. So there's a whole yes. discussion about laminates, <laughs> laminating bits of wood. Yes, so we have, actually, we have a whole masterclass um, on using laminates for guitar making, um, using the bag press, a vacuum bag press, because um, um, Darren King from bagpress.com is one of our members. And uh, he actually came to the workshop and we filmed a whole, um, well, a masterclass. We showed about six different things that you can do with it related to guitar making, from making the backs and sides on acoustic guitars to bridge clamps and all sorts of stuff you can do with it. Okay, so if you have any um, specific laminate questions, then Darren's your man. Head, head over to the forum and um, you're looking for Darren King from Bag Press or... You can, you'll find um, his website as well, bagpress.com, where um, he will actually supply you with um, all sorts of vacuum technology. We're not affiliated in any way, but um, not yet anyway, but we are hoping that um, Darren is actually going to be making um, some patterns for us, which will be available for sale. In fact, um, he's just sent us one to test. And I'll give you a sneak preview at the end of one of Darren's amazing jigs that he's come up with. Darren's got an amazing high-tech workshop full of CNCs and laser cutters and stuff. Um, so he'll be, he'll be getting on that and uh, there'll be more news on that coming up. Um, but stick around to the end and as a special little treat, I'll show you the, um, the jig that he sent up just a few days ago and we're about to start testing it. I always test these things before we put them on sale to you guys. So that's what we'll be doing. So another question. Okay, well, just a, a point following up on that. Um, so Dad says, hello, Martin. That exactly, is exactly what you've been mentioning beach ply. Hey, Darren. In, in the chat. So there's stuff about beach ply. Um, and uh, uh, Rock and Roller 912 says that he reckons marine ply is probably more expensive than some solid. Yeah, ones. that is a good point, actually. <laughs> Very good points. Um, Plywood can be more expensive than the real stuff. So uh, right. So I've got some questions about wood before you move on to fretwood. Go on. Right. Then. So um, first of all, uh, uh, Ian Jackson is asking, um, uh, what is your feeling about sapili? Well, I'm happy to use any wood. So um, I'm not. I try not to be as snobby like some people. Um, I'll be honest with you right now, right. I've had an awful lot of people come to my workshop with the same picture of a PRS, which is heavily photoshopped, isn't it? Let's face it. It's out of a magazine. The same picture of a PRS, which has got perfect, even um, 
beautiful quilt and it's always the blue one <laughs> and they say I want to make something like this well those pieces of wood are extremely rare and extraordinarily expensive because they're purely clean and even so the more the more pure and clean your piece of wood is the more expensive it is this piece for instance is um is an, is an absolutely stunning piece of wood let's get it on a different camera absolutely stunning piece of wood but look it's got it's got some different color on it so this that makes it a lot cheaper if it was perfect even like this all the way through that's what prs call it they would call it like, like their tent top um, we just call it like 5a master quality wood um, Some people insist that it must be pure, clean and even all the way through. Personally, I'm happy to use it however it looks. And to me, the imperfections are often the most beautiful parts. And those, those, those perfect PRS tank tops, to me, you've seen one, you've seen them all, if you, see, if you get my point. Um, we like our wood to have a little bit of individuality. That's just a personal preference. That's why I really like the spalted stuff because um, each piece is so different to another piece. Did I answer that question? Yes, you did. And, um, so I'm happy to use sapili or mahogany or anything. But you've, you've um, also... What is, what is uh, more important to me is, for instance, the neck piece. I would want a fairly boring piece with nice straight quartz on grain if, if possible. Okay, so um, on that score then, there were two questions, uh, uh, which I've, I'm sorry, I've forgotten who asked them, but there was one about, they're both about grain filling, um, so somebody asked about whether you would need to grain fill, I think it was Rock and Roller actually, a, a spalted maple more, and then also, um, I think Depends Ian on the piece. also asked about mahogany, so do you want to just talk a bit about grain filling? Grain filler, okay, so this isn't supposed to be, um, well, it can be another about finishing. But we are working right now behind the scenes. We've been really busy behind the scenes actually with a load of stuff going on, which we'll get into at a future point. But the main thing we're working on at the moment behind the scenes is our new finishing course. So this actually came up this morning on the forum. Um, there's a guy um, spraying his guitar and he's had a rub through, which means uh, when he was polishing, he's rubbed through to his wood. Um, well, the only thing to do really is to add more coats. I always add three more coats and then repolish. Um, but anyway, I digress. We're talking about, why am I talking about finishing? Grain filler. Grain filler, just quickly. So when we're spraying a piece of wood, we, what we're looking for, what most people are looking for, is that kind of like sucked sweet, boiled sweet look, where it looks like a mirror. That's really difficult to achieve. Um, wood is like a sponge and it's full of little holes. And so you're, when, when you spray a car, for instance, you spray metal, the, the lacquer just sits on top of the metal, very well behaved, doesn't do anything. With wood, it sinks into the wood by a variable amount. If it's curly maple, it will sink in more to some bits than others. And so with wood, what you have to do is just build it up coat by coat, um, depending on the finish you're using is the amount of coats you use um, but you build it up enough so that you can sand it flat and then polish it so that is a whole procedure that we'll be going into on the course um, not for the faint-hearted or for the beginner I recommend an oiled finish which is just wipe on wipe off or a gel coat or there's lots of other type of like a polyester finish that you can just wipe on and wipe off nowadays but if you want that full-on sucky sweet look then the best thing you can do is choose a wood that doesn't need grain filling. So they're out there. So maple, for instance, older, um, any close grain wood, you can tell by looking at it usually, um, any close grain wood like your older or um, maple, the grain is so close together that the, the lacquer doesn't sink too much and so you don't need any grain filler. Um, 
but there's other word like mahogany um, where I don't know if you can actually see let's get you a super close up you can see the grain is actually quite open these are like little pores in the wood and when you spray it it's like imagine like when you're looking at a drop of water on a window notice how it magnifies everything five times well when you spray your lacquer every little dimple in the wood will be magnified by five so um, one way to uh, cut, cut that down to a minimum is to use grain filler so you can just use ordinary wood filler or there are specific types of wood filler that are formulated for grain filler um, you can just use ordinary wood filler and just water it down a bit, make it a bit thinner. Or you can buy powders that you water down and make your own grain filler. Um, I find the best grain filler at the moment is a gel coat. Yeah, I can't actually put my hands on it right now. But there's a liquid, a liquid gel coat that you can use, which is a wipe on and wipe off um, deal. And um, that, that's clear and it will fill all the grain. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to cover all that. In fact, I do cover it on the course. If you join up right now on the guitar making site as a premium member, you'll get access to the design and build courses. And there's a design your own electric guitar, which is an oiled finish. So we just wipe on and wipe off, easy peasy. Um, but we also do uh, an acoustic guitar and on the acoustic guitar, it's actually sprayed using, um, using these aerosols just out of a can um, with a matte cellulose finish. And, uh, and I actually use the clear gel coat on that. So if you wanna see how that's done, then you're gonna, you'll have to join up as a premium member and um, go to build your own acoustic and the finishing section it also shows you um, obviously with finishing it's all about the preparation spraying a coat of lacquer is the easy part but you need to get your um, work piece ready for that and there's a whole procedure to go through for that so um, yeah the best advice I can give you at the moment is to join up on the course and there is, uh, there is a section on finishing at the moment, which includes grain filling. Well, you're going to have to answer some questions. because Go on then. Not... Right, quick, okay. quick fire questions then. Right, so, uh, Boolean Universe says, hey, is, is poplar a close grain wood? Yes. Okay, that's answers that then. Um, uh, uh, Ian Jackson says, is tongue oil or Danish oil or both? Well, try both, see which one you prefer. <laughs> Easy, these questions, aren't they? I said we use Liberon. Yeah, I personally use my, my favourite blend of oil is Liberon finishing oil, which is a blend of all those oils. Okay, Parsnip Fingers says, um, oh, and you know, he said, when you said we weren't business people, he said we're the best kind of business people. Cheers, Parsnip That's Fingers. Nice him, isn't it? So, um, but he says, if it's going to be covered in paint, why would it even matter what kind of wood it is? Good point. Well, good question. Many, many manufacturers have asked the same question. I've had some, um, I've had some interesting examples in my workshop. MDF guitars. Block uh, board. We had block board. Uh, LDF, lightweight density fibre board. So medium density fibre board is MDF, isn't it? But they do a lightweight one. So we've seen that as well. Um, it's, it's like cardboard. <laughs> it's like oh, a it's like a cardboard, a cardboard guitar. guitar oh it? yeah, yeah. Of course, we've seen a cardboard guitar. I've seen a glass guitar recently on um, YouTube. Google that. A guitar completely made from glass. Wow. And acrylic. We've seen acrylic. Yeah. Not recommended for beginners. <laughs> acrylic, recycled plastic. Right. So Mark. Yeah. Mark. I recommend you stick with something like mahogany, to be honest. But what difference does different kind of woods make to the finishing? So. Yeah, it's going to make your job easier or harder. Um, so, 
Why? If you really hate yourself, <laughs> use highly figured ash or something like that. Um, ash is one of the worst guitar uh, woods to finish um, because it's got hard bits next to soft bits and you end up, if you're not careful, it can end up wavy. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do a video on how to avoid that at some point. Um, okay, so um, it, uh, <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. we still haven't done fretboards yet. Okay, well, you've got to answer these questions. Go on, then, quick questions, quick, right, quick, quick. So, Stephen Adams says, What is the brand name of the liquid filler? The liquid filler is called Gel Coat. Liquid Gel Coat. Um, let me have another look for that. Lewis is in it again. Lewis! <laughs> Still haven't found me square yet. Give me 10 seconds, I'll see if I can put my hand on it. Got it. Right, it's, it's Aqua Coat. Aqua Coat, ladies and gentlemen. This is great stuff. It's water based as well, so it's non harmful. Um, again, I would recommend that you, whatever finish you're planning on putting on top of it, always do a test first. And then you know if it's going to react. You will occasionally, when you're mixing products, you'll get a reaction, like a chemical reaction, where anything could happen. It could blister, it could crack, it could all just fall off. <laughs> There's all kinds of fun in the world of finishing. But we'll get to all that on the course. Okay. Um, there's a bit of discussion about different kinds of uh, materials and someone's, someone's raised the subject of ceramic guitar. A ceramic guitar, yeah. We almost did one of them once. So, yeah. Um, if you guys have made guitars from anything other than what I've shown you today, then go to the forum and put a picture up for us and then we can all oogle it and we'll we'll all go ooh and ah <laughs> right fretboards if you buy the um the build your own kit from us you will be supplied with a beautiful rosewood fretboard which is pre-slotted so th there's no shame i don't think there's any shame in using a pre-slotted fretboard. It's pre-radiused, basically ready to glue on. Um, at least you know that the guitar is going to play in tune. So that's my philosophy. Um, if you prefer to make your own fretboard, then just let us know. And we'll send you a blank instead. But usually we send out um, a slotted pre-made fretboard. This is our it's probably our number one selling item on the on the website actually is is just you can buy the, the fretboards um, separately you can specify your own scale length uh, whether you want a nut slot or not and radius or not these are all radius to 12 inch radius which is pretty standard and so if you buy a kit from us you'll be supplied with something like this rosewood fretboard ready to work on now the reason I've chosen rosewood, again, um, it's it's um, it sounds amazing, but it's also the easiest to work. So, wow! Don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear that there's there's some powerful bass coming off that. So if a, if a piece of wood is resonant while it's a piece of wood. That's going to help when it's a guitar. So these are all rosewood fretboards ready to go. Um, most fretboards are either rosewood or ebony or maple. So I showed you the maple earlier. Maples are light coloured, so it shows up any mistakes a lot worse. Um, and also maple, you need to spray before you um, can put the frets in. Um, any lighter coloured woods, this is actually satin wood, but it's the same, similar colour to maple. Any lighter colour woods, you really need to spray first before you put the frets in. 
that's going to be covered on the course as well. In fact, this, this is actually work in progress from said course. Um, um, can so, I just tell you that Stephen Evans says he's already received two of the Rosewood fretboards. Cheers, uh, Steve. Telly bills and they nice look one. brilliant. Thanks for that. Um, so yeah, maple not recommended for the be beginner because you need to spray it. The darker coloured, we just apply a coat of, coat of lemon oil and that's just as a moisture barrier to protect the wood um, from dirt and moisture from your fingers. So dark coloured woods don't need to be sprayed. They're a lot easier, to, that makes it a lot easier to build your guitar. So rosewood's recommended, but if you're doing any kind of fancy inlay, again, I don't recommend you do any fancy inlay, especially for your first guitar. Um, we supply you in the kit with basic round mother of pearl dots. Um, but any kind of fancy inlays work better on ebony because it gives you a black background um, and it makes your inlays look a lot more crisp. I've done a whole uh, video on inlays as well, by the way, on the guitar making channel. And that's another course that's imminent um, is um, how to do uh, inlays. So that's going to be hitting the site very soon. If you're doing any kind of fancy inlays at all, you're better off using ebony for your fretboard because it gives you a black background and it makes your inlays look perfect. You use a black glue to glue them in and then you can't see the join. Um, so recommended is rosewood, but there's a whole world of options out there. Um, my fretboard wood comes in rough sawn like this again so if you buy a piece of wood it's you're really up against it trying to trying to first of all just trying to get it straight and level so highly recommended to use a pre-made fretboard for your first guitar and then you can always sell your first guitar and buy the gear to slot your own fretboards as i'm going to show you in a minute um so again fretboards any kind of wood can be figured so there's a piece of plain ebony but you can also get uh Macassa or stripy ebony. And this is like this one's called a leopard spot. Um, this is fake ebony. So there's certain places in the world where we're not allowed to send certain wood. So if you're in America, we're not allowed to send you rosewood. So you have the option of this is actually fake rosewood, believe it or not. Sundari. It's called it's called Sundari, and somebody, some genius, has come up with a way of. British is the UK is based in wow. South of England. They they make up um, boards of wood, so they're using um, boxwood or something similar. I don't know what it is to be honest, but they're using another kind of wood, it's and it's sliced super thin, and then glued back together in layers, in such a way to create. I mean, look at that. It's rock light. The website is rock light. Yeah. So the ebony one is called rock light. No, rock light to make. Rocklight is the company, that's the trademark, and Ebano is the ebony and Sundari is the rosewood. But look at that, it's amazing. So this is the future, folks. When they ban wood altogether, um, don't worry, because we've got a substitute. And, and do you like it? Still sounds good. I'd say um, I'd give it 80%. If we call rosewood 100%, I would say Sundari is 80%. Um, but that's come a long way in the last five or ten years or so since um, since I last tried um, kind of like synthetic wood, uh, which sounded horrible, like rubber. At least this actually sounds like wood. Make up your own mind. That's Sundari. This is real rosewood. The pitch is irrelevant. Ignore the pitch. What we're listening for is the quality of the, the tone, the depth of the tone, and the volume and sustain. Right, we're running out of time. I've got questions and There's comments. lots of other woods that look like rosewood but aren't. Palferro, um, for instance. And, and here's, uh, I'm gonna finish showing you the, the ultimate um, fretboard wood, which is band. <laughs> So if you want me to make you a guitar out of this, I'm afraid you're out of luck. <laughs> you should have come 20 years ago. 
So this is antique Brazilian rosewood. Um, so I'm, I'm not allowed to sell this anymore because uh, well it's, it's contraband now, isn't it? But I'm allowed to make myself a guitar out of it. So you can guess what I'm going to be doing with that. Right. Gorgeous, let's have a listen to that, shall we? Oh. So you, can you hear the difference? Again. It's louder and it rings for longer. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, have a word with your MP and see if we can do something about it. Because <laughs> it'd be nice to be able to use it again, wouldn't it? Um, there are other woods that will get close. Um, I have a piece of Madagascan rosewood here, which is reclaimed from an old piece of furniture. It's going to be my... There's um, an embargo on that, Mark. This is going to be my next acoustic guitar. So yeah, if you're not sure whether you've got a good piece or a bad piece, tap it. See what it sounds like. If it sounds like a bit of rubber, oh, but I've got to do a caveat now, because everybody comes into the workshop and they go, Yeah, the thing is you've got to hold your piece of wood in just the right place to let it ring. So it's about a third of the way down and a third of the way in. If you hold it just with the tips of your finger, then you should be able to get it to ring. Try a few different places. There. And you can get your, your piece of wood to ring. Beautiful. Right. Got to take some questions. Mahogany. It's about a third of the way in and about a third of the way in. Hold it with just the tips of your finger. See if you hold it too tight, it doesn't ring as well. If you hold it just with the tips of your finger, it allows it to ring. We're trying to hold it on what, what is a node. A node is a part of the wood that doesn't vibrate when you tap it. Pieces of wood vibrate in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways. Right, uh, last round of questions then, right, yeah, yeah. and we're going to show you the, the the jig that we're testing. Right, well, so let's do go it. on, go for it. Quick fire round of questions. Okay, so first of all, Bill Flood, he, the first Bill drone that he built here, he had Ibano on his, and he he said it's 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 plays great and it's worn it's worn fine, you know, it's worn very well. It's, One advantage of Ibano is it's pure black. So if you want pure black, ebony is never pure black. There's always some kind of grain in it. People expect it to be pure black. So if you really want pure black, Ebano is great for that. Okay, so um, and so when you were talking about grain filler, uh, Boo, Brilliant Universe suggested a thing called bar coat. He said that neutralizes one thing, which means you can put two, two substances together, apparently. Bar coat? Um, not tried it myself um just be a bit wary of anything that's that builds up too thick um what we what we're building a musical instrument so um what we want is for our finish to be as thin as possible actually the skill of a guitar finisher is to get that sort of like um oiled sweet look but have the finish as thin as possible um a lot of factory jobs they look great but the finish can be a mill, a mill and a half thick. I've seen even thicker. So that deadens the sound of the guitar. So traditionally, guitars are finished in cellulose, which is, um, you know, ultimately the thinnest, best finish for a guitar. Um, or at least it was until the UV finish came along, which we use here. Um, the UV finish is so incredibly thin. It's the only thing that can compete with a cellulose finish. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. I'm not sure what that bar coat sounds like. It might be like a bar top thing, which bar lacquer can be a bit thick for guitars. But that's not to say you can't use it. Just bear in mind it's not ideal and it might just dampen the sound a little bit. I don't know if it was a bar thing. It's just called, that was the trade name. Okay, brilliant. Cheers though for that. Okay. And, um, and Eddie Cameron mentioned uh, a naphtha based grain sealer, which is expensive. Um, but works a treat apparently. Okay, so. let's have trade names and play where we can get it from in the comments, please. Okay. If you've got any other any other ideas for grain fillers, 
um, make sure to um, leave us the name and, and a link where we can get it from. Right, so please, got... thank you, that'd be great. All right, so I want to go right back to the beginning, right, because this, this today was about the kit. So we've had um, a couple of questions. Eddie Cameron asked, um, if we complete my kit and it's completed, can we send it back um, for finishing? No, for finishing, when it's assembled, can we make the thing? Would you finish a guitar for us? Yeah, sure. We, we have a finishing shop here. So we, we've, we've actually, in the past, we've done finishing for all kinds of people, other guitar makers, um, a drum manufacturer. Uh, yeah, we've done spray jobs for, for all kinds of people. So um, even the odd uh, helmet, I think, has been done in the back there. So uh, yeah, if you've got... Um, drums, we've done yeah. handmade drums. Um, if you've got any, anything you'd like us to spray, just get in touch. Um, we do have our own in-house spray shop. So uh, that's perfectly possible. Uh, get in touch for prices and that kind of thing. And if someone has any problems or wants something like um, uh, something different, like a scarf neck, if somebody wants a, a, a bit of customization on their kit, um, can they send something back? Yeah, sure. Back yeah, sure. Um, if you want anything different, um, just let us know and we'll let you know what the difference in price will be and send it out to you. And um, he, a, a supplement on that was scarf about neck would be no scarf problem. neck for beginner, you know, do you... Yeah, we could do that. Um, I could make up a scarf neck blank for you. Something like that. And send that out. Ready for its truss rod slot. And to be cut out, etc. Um, the reason we don't, at the moment, I wanted to start with what I think is the easiest possible style of guitar to build. Um, we can do um, the set neck like this is what I think is the easiest to reproduce at home. Um, but a bolt on neck like this is actually not much, not much different. It's just a bit trickier to get the hole to do this hole either end, which either end you do it. You've got to drill a hole to join up with the with the truss rod slot. So um, there is actually a, a whole course on the website how to make a bolt on neck also. So if you want to make this style of guitar, um, we've got that covered as well. Well, can I just read you out what Boo said? He said bar coat is not for grain filling. If you sprayed one product onto the guitar and then sprayed another product over the top that reacted with it. You can sand it back and spray both. Right, bar gotcha. Back and forth. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's very thin, is what he's saying. Yes, so All brilliant. Right. Okay, we've still got some things, right? Uh, <clears throat> almost there, almost there, almost there. So hopefully so, you all got that. If you do get a reaction, there is a product out there called Bar Coat, which will seal in the bottom coat and allow you to spray on your top coat and it won't react. And that means you can take it back. In well. Cheers for that, Boo. Okay, so two. Um, Two really good questions. Piotr, he's a bit late today, but Piotr's just um, come online and he said, when can we expect some new courses? <laughs> I said it's the million dollar question. I'm asking the million dollar question. ASAP. Very soon. We're working on it, aren't we? Before Christmas, We're there's going to be a pile of new stuff. Brilliant. Right, and then lastly, um, uh, TV 101 said, um, uh, if only... If only a reliable fretboard slotter was available. If only. Um, and where could we perhaps get one and back press then? If only one was available somewhere for sensible money. So I, I yeah, that, that would be that nice, wouldn't it? Your last section, Mark. So um, yeah, slotting, making your fretboard is half the battle, and making sure all these slots are in just the right place is so important. Otherwise, your guitar's never going to play in tune, is it? So we supply our pre-made fretboards ready to go to make your life easier. And what I recommend is you sell your first guitar. If you want to be a guitar maker, make your first guitar, sell it, and then you can buy one of these. So you can either make your own fret slotting machine or um, we're actually just about to start testing the, um, what, what are we going to call it? What's it called, Darren? It's called the Bag Press Fret Slotting Jig. Made in the UK. Designed 
registration applied. <laughs> Check it out, folks. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so here's the here's the main part of the jig. Look at this. Back in a minute. So um this is all like precision made by CNC machine. What we've got here are rock hard bearing surfaces which are adjustable and it's it's preset so that the, the saw will slide in there. And it also comes with the saw, which also has bearing surfaces on it. So you won't see this anywhere else, folks. Here's the saw. So this has got special bearing tape on it. It's like low friction um, and it rides in there really nicely. So what we can do is adjust these until there's no, there's no play in the saw and it will just guide nicely in there. You can also um, adjust the height so that we can control the depth of the slot with these here. So this all looks good. That's the jig part. And, and it's, there's a pin here, which is movable. There's the pin. It moves into either one of these, depending on which scale length you're choosing. Okay, so the clever bit is this. Look at this. The work that's gone into that. So Darren's really put a lot of thought into these. It's amazing. They look so beautiful. Um, so, do you know that they were tested on the forum by two of our most respected brothers in arms on the forum? So they've already been tested by some of our um, students. But what he's put on there are the most popular scale lengths that we use on our courses. So it's got the 25 inch it's got the Gibson 24 and 3 quarters. It's got the acoustic scale length that we use. Um, Fender is obviously really common. And um, Darren's put his two favourite ones on as well. <laughs> Which is the, the Grand Bouche and the Petit Bouche. So that's Maca Ferry scale lengths. So you've got six different scale lengths on one pattern. But that's just, that's just one pattern. Um, that would be the one that we'd recommend you start with, probably. Um, but if you wanted to make um, a scale length that's not covered on there, he's got a whole range of these. Um, again, we're going to test these, and make sure we're happy with them before we put them on the site, but um, I can't see there being any trouble with so them. Then don't forget all the others. They look wonderful. <laughs> so, um, lots of different scale lengths there. This is, this is the baritone one. Baritone. Um, so uh, 26 and a half to 30 inches in half inch increments. So pretty much any baritone scale you want. Preston Reeds is on there. And he's actually made up six versions of these. <coughs> now you wouldn't have to buy them all because um, some of them have got jubilee cuts on. But... Um, He's laid them up different. So this one's more aimed at classical or acoustic guitars. There's one here for just electric guitars. And there's one that's um, specifically for basses. Mark, I was going to say, Mark, so Wayne, I, Wayne Pedantry, he's new to the, he's new in the chat. He's, uh, he was asking about basses, no basses. Hi, Wayne. Show that bass Yeah, so thing. six basses. Is that enough for you? That's, that's um, pretty much every scale of bass that you'd want. Right from a 30 inch to a 36 inch. If you were going to make a, a six string bass, I'd recommend a 36. 35 for a five inch and 34 for a four inch. These are all shorter scale. Brilliant. So we've got basses, baritones, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and then, and then the, the one which is a mixture. 
um, of all of all our favourite ones. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'll be testing this out um, at some point over this week, and um, we'll let you know maybe on Wednesday. So we're here live streaming every Wednesday and Saturday at 1 p.m. is our time. Can you just line up the slideshows for us, Carol? Um, yeah. Uh, we're going to finish today just by showing you. Um, I'm going to show you some of the guitars that I've made over the years. Just just three or four guitars that I've made. Which one is it? Where um, it's just. I thought you could control it. So, um, this start. is an exotica. Let me start again. I thought you could. I think you could yeah, let me take over. Come oh on. my goodness. I've got it. It's your mum. Let's start the next one now. Alright, here's another one. <laughs> um, a curve, one of my curves. That's Jarrah. And, uh, Mark of quality on the headstock there. Glued in neck. So that's basically the same guitar as what I showed you, same as the basic guitar with the addition and a fancy piece of wood. This one here is a, another Exotica, which is a through neck. Um, one of my designs. Uh, this one's got a tram on it. And again, that's the Jarrah. And you can see I've used different woods. So there's no colour on this guitar at all. It's all just natural woods. All of these guitars that I'm showing you at the end here are all natural wood. There's no colour applied. Um, just to show you that, you know, what is available. We used to be the Europe dealer for LSRs. They're discontinued now. Um, but um, you can put all kinds of fancy bits and bobs on your guitar um, to upgrade it. You know, it's easy just to change the tuners, that kind of thing. So this is uh, the last one. Um, Buckeye Bow guitar. Um, made for amazing rock player. Is it playing, Carl? Don't worry about it. No, Don't worry. And so there's, there's going to be some nice close-ups of this Buckeye, which looks like marble, but it's actually just natural wood. Um, someone was talking about um, Spalted earlier. It's kind of similar to Spalted, and um, it did need grain filling. So there's bits where it's almost like cork, and you have to you have to fill the holes um, to make it look like that. But yeah, with the proper grain filler. Oh yeah, perfectly normal couple, just like me and you, Carol. <laughs> so, so um, Sam, who's in the pink, made that guitar for Ian, who's in the black. She didn't make um, it. Sorry, she bought, she paid for it for him. It was a, it was a present um, made by me. So there you go. Um, Beautiful bit of wood. Anybody can go out and buy an expensive piece of wood. Um, but I don't recommend you do that for your first guitar. But you can. Nobody's going to stop you. Are they, Carol? Nobody's going to stop you what? Going out and buying an expensive piece of wood. So here we are, back in the workshop. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Um, lots of good, lots of nice comments about your guitars. Beautiful, nice. Cheers, guys. Um, uh, yeah, I don't like showing off too much, but um, I just wanted to show you some examples of different woods that there are, and uh, some uh, examples of guitars that I've built in the past. So um, the there's good news. There. We've got um, what? Put them all there so that you right. can bring the camera around. Lentils have arrived. <laughs> so we're not going to starve. Thank you! Thanks, Thank you, Darren. Thanks, Darren, for that. Um, much appreciated. 
Uh, yeah, I think we're done here. If you've got any questions about um, what wood you should be using, or if you're not sure what wood you've got, you've got a piece of wood at home and you want it identifying, head over to the forum, put a picture up and we'll, we'll help you out. And uh, whilst you, I've, I've, I've um, released kits in the shop now. so that Oh, Carol's already fixed this thing in the shop so you can buy your kits and they won't be on back order. And any special requests? Email us or put it on the message. So to cut a long story short, I recommend mahogany for your neck and body and rosewood for your fretboard. And if you buy a kit from us, this is what you'll be getting. So the link's in the description. And uh, remember, if you want full access to the courses, you need to become a premium member or you can just become a supporter. Every little helps. Um, yeah, at the moment, we've because we're playing musicians as well, so we've got no gigs, they've all dried up what, with the lockdown. Um, we used to run courses, people come from all over the world to my little workshop, and uh, we do build your own guitar courses. At the moment, that's all been canceled because of the lockdown pandemic measures. So the, really, this is all we've got left is, um, busking on YouTube. So I'm not here for my um, health or well-being, let me tell you. Um, I'm here to try and help you guys start or continue your guitar making adventures and make life a bit easier for you. And also, we're saving up for another bag of lentils. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got the lentils. I'm saving up for a pair of socks. So cheers, folks. Remember, um, whatever you're doing in this, in your workshop, um, be careful. Always count your hands before and after hands. each operation. <laughs> yeah, count your fingers as well. It's always worth counting your fingers before and after using any sharp tool. But more importantly, measure twice, cut once. Ha, ha, ha.